Hello everyone and welcome back. This project is done. It's time to head home. Well, yesterday I did about 740 miles. Today now, I'm at 560 miles, but it won't be long and I'll be back up to the farmhouse. trailer unloaded and get that dropped off today uh, then I'm gonna bring lunch to Melissa's work because she has clients coming in over the lunch hours several of them and she won't be able to leave but when I did the last video when we um, when I unloaded this trailer I had comments in there that were why didn't all this stuff just get thrown away it's junk uh, she's a hoarder there's all kind of crap like that it really pissed me off at the time and I, I sh I'm better than I used to be at that. And, you know, then I start commenting back the way I comment back. I don't hold much back. And uh, then I just started deleting them and blocking people. But people don't understand, when that house flooded, I mean, Melissa's whole entire life up to that point was in that house. So the stuff that survived, which isn't all that much, is all that she has left of her whole previous life before that. So... This stuff might not mean anything to you or some of it to me. I mean, there is some of it that, yeah, I think it should have, you know, tossed it out. But it, meant, it means a lot to her. And who am I to get rid of stuff that means something to her? It just seems stupid to me that I, you know, would have that power over her to say, well, we're going to throw this away. Why, why do I care? Shove it in the shed here. We'll deal with it later. But that's why it's all kept. I mean, this is some of the stuff she hasn't even been able to go through yet since the flood because it was just so traumatic when that happened. This planter thing right here is like one of them. I mean, the trailer was full and I thought, well, I'm going to have to leave this back. You know, we've, she's got so many planters and stuff. She really wanted them because she loves plants and they'll end up everywhere with stuff in them. And then I had this in the trailer when I showed her a picture before I closed it up because I just shoved it in right by the door and figured, you know, maybe it'll make it, maybe it won't. And she said, I hope this doesn't break because it's uh, special. I didn't think anything of it. I went ahead and pulled it out a little bit, wrapped bubble wrap around it, shoved it back in, and tried to keep it a little bit safer than it was before. And then yesterday when I got here, I, she didn't even want me to open the door so she could see if anything broke, and nothing really has. It was packed too tight. This, though, was the very last thing that her sister gave her, and her sister died last year. So it's stuff like that to me. It's, I mean, it's, it's nice, but I was running out of room. It's like, okay, this is one of 50 planters that I'm bringing home, or I have in the last two, this load and the one before. And this one has great sentimental value to her. So it's just important that everything got kept and had a later date. I mean, I've got stuff in from there from the hobby farmhouse that, I mean, what, do you, what am I going to do with it? But some of it is, means a lot to me, and some of it doesn't, but at the time... You know, we just got to get it out of there. This is a 1,400-mile move, you know. I mean, just get it in the trailer, get it up here, and we'll deal with it later. This thing here, I did kind of raise a little bit of a fuss about, but she won. This was underneath the carport, and it's a rolling cart. And uh, I just cleaned it all out. You know, it's... I mean, everything works. It just looks old. And then I sent her a picture in the carport. Look how nice this looks. And she goes... I want you to make sure you bring back my rolling cart. And I said, that metal thing? And she said, yes. And uh, I didn't know at the time how I was going to fit it in here, but I did uh, shift some things around so I could slide it in. But 
there was no yes and then come back with well maybe we could leave it it was just like yes and it was like okay this is gonna come back if i have to tie it on top of my truck <laughs> This table I wondered about too because only one of the chairs survived the flood, but the, the table itself did. And this is the one that I've sat in the whole time, you know, you've seen many videos where I'm at this table. And this table she's had since, I mean, all of her kids had, you know, breakfast cereal before school on it and everything. So I knew that this would have to be saved, but I knew I couldn't fit it in here unless I could take it apart. And uh, I did. I can see here that I have done... I remember doing repairs on this years ago when it was shaky. I had to take this off. These boards were bad and I put new ones on. That was after I first met her. But I knew I could take it apart and slide it in here, so that was okay. I brought the fridge back from under the carport. That can go in the workshop. And then I've got the tiller, which is good because both of the tillers that I have, the one I think is totally shot now, and the other one, I need to do something with the tires and I can't get them off the machine to bring them in to have tubes put in them. There we go, Melissa has one of her garden tables back. The other one is back here in my truck. I had to do that separate because with that one the glass is still attached. This one the glass just popped right off so I had to put that in the trailer. And I didn't have room for the bottom part so I put that in, the, in my truck. I go up here and sweep out the trailer and get those blankets put back in there few other things in the back of my truck that can go in but then I need to take a shower get this trailer dropped off and then go pick up lunch for Melissa all this stuff here uh, a lot of its tools that go in the workshop shovels shop back the uh, pressure washer and stuff and then there's some pots and stuff that'll go up by the garden today because the hot water heater was out or something <laughs> so then called up Wild, Wide World of Wings and Superior and ordered wings and I picked those up and had lunch with Melissa spent a couple hours there now I'm heading back at 77 degrees outside I think when that six-wheeler gets back here, I think I'm going to have to park it in here for a while. I have nowhere to put it right now. It's under cover.
it fired right up. It works. I think it needs to be run a little bit. It seemed a little, a little shaky. I'll check the uh, hydraulic oil and stuff like that. And it's time to start cutting wood pretty soon. That's a lot of wood to cut right there. But five more months and the leaves are going to start to fall off the trees. We'll be into September. Six months and we'll have snow probably. Looks like she survived winter okay. It's hot in here. Look at all the ladybugs. They get all over in the house. Well, they're not ladybugs, but they're something like them. They get all over in the house, too. Yeah, everything looks good in here, too. No mouse droppings in the sink. No water stains on the ceiling just dead ladybugs like every spring I'll actually get this one set up within the next two or three weeks uh, Zachary Samantha and Rose already have it for June 9th they're gonna be staying here between houses and there's some other people that want to use it this summer, so I'm not going to set it up in the same place as I usually do, though. I'm going to set it up right over here where I put in the sewer dump for the work trailer. I'm going to set it up here because when I set it over by the house, the whole entire summer, you walk out the house and you have no view of the garden or anything when you're on the back deck. And I'm doing work differently this year. I'm not going to be doing as much work down in the cities. I'm only going to go down there for some uh, some real big projects, otherwise I'm going to keep my work up here. I'm going to do more on the videos, I'm going to do some construction up here, and some other stuff uh, that is still in the works right now, but it should work out good for me. This year, especially with uh, fuel prices so high and everything, and, and it's time, it's time. I've been doing what I do for so long that I can do it anywhere I want to. If I hook up the work trailer for somebody coming over, I'm going to put it over here on the other side of the mound because I can run the line into one of these tops here too and it can uh, sewer dump right into there. What are you doing down here, Smudgy? You know you're not supposed to be down here. taken off. I need to bring that four-wheeler in. It needs a new cable. It won't idle and you can pull on the cable, you know, right up where the hand thing is and it'll run faster and it just drives you crazy. 
and I do have the cable. They just said it gets a little tricky. Where it hooks up down below, and I think I want to bring it in and have them do the cable, and I want it serviced. Change the oil, just go through everything and make sure it's running perfect and in good shape. I like taking the chains off a lot more than putting them on. I'm going to stay home this weekend, and this weekend is opening fishing. My dad's going to go up there Friday afternoon, and he's staying until Wednesday or Thursday. I'm going to go up early Monday morning and stay Monday, Tuesday, come home Wednesday. I mean, what's the difference? It's not like we're fighting for fish. There's, I never see anybody on the lake, so that's good. And uh, I haven't been home for a full weekend in like six or seven weekends. So I really, and that's the only time that Melissa's home. She's working all the time. So I think I'd better stay home, get a few things done. It sounds like the weather will be pretty decent. Sunday might be rainy. And then I'll just go up early Monday morning. I can help my dad put stuff out that he needs over at his place. Get the tent opened up for the year. Do a little bit of fishing, get the boat running. I, I need a, a time, good time. I need some days up at the tent. I really do. But I don't want to feel stressed because I haven't spent any time with Melissa on the weekends either. All this stuff has to go into the workshop, so I'm just going to run over there and drop this off, and then i got to bring that refrigerator all the way in also. I got everything done I wanted to do today. I'll find a place for that refrigerator eventually. We'll have to get the beehives ready too because oh, not this, well, the Friday before Memorial Weekend, Memorial, yeah, Memorial Weekend, Melissa's bees come, so I have to get the beehives all set up. And if I don't put it in a fenced area, I have to put an electric fence around it because of bears. Uh, they're definitely gonna wanna get in there and we have them around here. Still have to put those three other chairs together. But now that I'm back, I can get kind of that stuff done. Almost 8 o'clock, though. I'm going to run inside right now. Still 72 degrees outside. 59 in here. It's always air-conditioned when it's warm outside. That cement keeps it cool. But anyway, we're watching Ozark in the last, I don't know, six, seven episodes or whatever are... Our, I don't know if they're all there yet or whatever. We watched one of them last night, and I like I don't get into too many shows. I like I watch Star Trek and Gunsmoke and and the new Trek and stuff, but not many. But I like that one. For me to like a show, though, there has to be some girl in it that I find hot and I like, and that the little blonde girl with the uh, or the blonde lady with the curly hair. She's just a firecracker. <laughs> I really like her in that show. So I've been enjoying that one with Melissa. Melissa likes watching like crime, the crime story ones or zombie shows and I can only handle so much of the killing like that and I'm done. trying to make a little thing in the corner here because all winter with the rabbit manure we've just been bagging it and just tossing it outside so that I can put it into something this spring that will eventually compost down and I can take the dirt out of the bottom.
So that was every bit as gross as I thought it would be. But now it's in there and now this can all rot down. I'm not the type to make a compost pile and then like turn it over and everything. Just keep stacking it up, it'll rot. And then eventually I'll come in on the bottom and just cut up so you can lift this up or maybe I'll build a door so you can open it and then you just shovel what's on the bottom because that will rot. And now we can throw old vegetable stuff from the garden that doesn't go to the chickens and just keep doing this and uh, get nice compost. It takes a little bit longer when you aren't mixing it and doing everything you're supposed to do, but it'll work just fine. Another thing we have to think about is first we use the straw and switch from that and use the cedar shavings that come from the planer in the workshop. It works great, it's absorbent, it smells good, but cedar is not going to rot anywhere near as fast as pine shavings or the straw. The straw was a mess though. But anyway, we'll probably switch from that, even though it really wouldn't hurt because that'll help aerate your soil kind of, but if you're just using it as a mulch fertilizer like on top of the bales, there's no reason to have that in there. So I'll probably switch to pine shavings or something else. I just ran up to l and I was looking at getting a, I have a 20 inch bar on my bigger chainsaw and I was going to get a 16 inch which I like running a 16 on there. But then I looked at what they had and I don't know if the numbers were all right and everything. And so then I just got a few sharpening stones for the my sharpener so I can get the chain sharpened up on the blade that I have and everything so eventually here I can start cutting some wood and I'm definitely going to want to throw it in when I go to the tent also. Well it's about 20 after 10, Melissa and I are going to bed. Got another storm rolling through. Good morning, everybody. It's a couple minutes after seven o'clock. We had a little over about, it was 1.11 inches of rain, my rain gauge said last night. This afternoon they're talking even stronger storms, so I guess we're going to be getting some more rain. It's supposed to be nice during the day though. Melissa, she was up, I don't know, a few minutes after 3 I think this morning. I woke up, it was just about 4 o'clock and she was already awake scrolling her phone. Little girl has to go, is going into the vet today, she's going in for cancer surgery. And you know, that cat's 18 years old and a big part of Melissa's life, so she was pretty sad and pretty quiet this morning. I just talked to her on her way in there. The vet is right by her work, so had to have her in by 7 o'clock. My dad is going to come up tomorrow, get here about 9 o'clock. He wants me to try out his chainsaw. He just brought that in to get fixed. Don't know if I talked about that already. And then he's heading up to the tent for opening fishing, and I will join him up there in... Well, three days. So, anyway, he's gonna stop here and then head up north. And I got a few days to get a few things done around here, and then I'm gonna go up there too. Well, I know this blade needs to be sharpened. I can't remember if I. I should have just bought a new blade for it, but I really might do that anyway. But I thought I might have a new one. I couldn't remember. I had to run down to Melissa's work and drop something off that she forgot. Now I'm just going to go to the Menards in Superior here and look at their bar and chain on a chainsaw because I don't care if it's a steel brand name. I've used the ones from Menards and they work pretty good. Just see what they've got. And then I think I'm going to go back and take Melissa out to lunch today. She's pretty stressed out. They did not have what I wanted. They 
didn't have anything for 16 I thought well maybe I'll just get a new 20 inch and they've got 20 inch chains but they're smaller teeth I think there are these safety ones for no kickback I want a blade that cuts hard and fast and I gotta hold the dang thing down so it don't kick back and just get the job done and they just didn't have what I'm looking for and I had lunch and right now it's about I don't know almost 12 30 heading back I'm gonna be going through some stormy weather here on the way back to the house though real dark clouds to the north. I don't know if they're going to clip us or not though. It looks like it might just miss us. Melissa should be going to the vet right now. Little girl came out of surgery okay. Um, she hasn't got to talk to the doctor yet though to see if they got it all or because they were going to remove the cancerous growth or whatever and I, I don't know what else they were going to do but Anyway, Melissa should be there right now, so I should find out shortly. Skies cleared up and the sun came out. The high today was only supposed to be 58. At least that's what my weather app said last time I looked at it. And then right now it's 65 degrees. I don't know if you guys can see that. But there's steam. Let me just try to zoom this in. You know, it rained out and got wet, and the whole process of getting this broke down, it gets real hot inside, and uh, there's steam coming off there. And that's good. That means she'll start to compost down. And Melissa's home, it's about, about 6.30 right now. And Melissa is home, and little girl is home, and the surgery went good. They won't know for about 10 days after they do biopsy and stuff uh, if they got it all or whatever, but she's just sitting on Melissa's lap on the couch right now and she's kind of groggy. This weather thing here says it's 70 outside and 52 in here. It's cold. I want to see which one of these blades I want to sharpen first. Talking with my dad earlier today, he went out and got a new chainsaw today. He's always had trouble with that one that he just bought. But anyway, he's gonna, he was going to buy a Husqvarna this time and try it because it has the easy start. And he said, you know, he's going to be 79 coming up here in August. And he said he doesn't know if it was because he had brain surgery or just because he's getting older but it's getting really hard for him to start the chainsaw. So he wanted to get one that had the easy start. And he had a, a steel with an easy start, but he had a lot of trouble with that whole starting thing, so he got rid of that one. Actually, I think he still has it, but it sits up at the cabin. And he got, I don't know if it's a 270 or whatever it is. The other one that he had was a little bit small too for power-wise. So now, instead of uh, trying out the chainsaw that he just got fixed tomorrow, he's going to bring up the new one tomorrow morning and we'll start it up and, and give it a test run and see how it does before he hits the cabin. This time when I sharpen it, these are getting down a ways, so I'm taking down, I don't know what these are, rake or rakes or whatever they are to clean out the stuff because that really makes it dig in. 
it starts to get in the way when you're uh, sharpening and sharpening and don't take those down a little bit. Got to watch out for kickback with that though. Not sure if you guys can see this or not, but every time I sharpen my own chainsaw blade, there'll be some jokester on there saying, I don't know how to do it because you can't keep the angle right. And if you look right here, there's a line. It's on every single tooth, and that tells you what the angle is supposed to be. There's another word for it, not angle. So when you're doing this, you can tell if you get off and you just straighten it, and it's real easy to get it. I used to have a chainsaw sharpening like machine. I haven't used one of those in, oh, I bet 25 years. My dad uses a hand file. I just like to use this thing here and it gets it really nice every time. But yeah, there's a line right here and you just follow that with your angle right here. batch of chainsaw gas. I need 50 to 1 and I don't have any of the little 2.8, you know, one of them for each uh, gallon of gas. I need 2.6 so what I did is went inside and filled up a water thing with how much I needed and then set it next to here and marked it on my cup. I always like to put the oil in first because then when you're dumping the gas in it starts mixing right away. This is also the same mixture I need for the bolt motor so I can't remember what I have up there and what I don't but this would be enough gas to get me around fishing for a day. Alright, I need to add two gallons of gas. I have two gallons of mixed 50 to 1 fuel in there and just like with every can I have this one has a string tied to the handle. Anything that I have with a string tied to the handle means it's mixed gas. I had no idea it was supposed to get so windy tonight. That's how I like a chainsaw to cut right there. Just plowed right through it. Okay everyone, it's almost 10.30, definitely storming and it's time for bed. Good morning everybody. Got another inch of rain overnight last night. A few minutes ago it was raining again. It's supposed to get sunny in 72 or 74 today. Well my dad was just here. And we took out his new chainsaw and got it out of the box. And it's not, it's about the same size as this one, but it's a Husqvarna and it fired right up. So he's headed up to the cabin and he just dropped this one off. He said he don't need it. So I'm going to see how it goes. 
it does pull hard. I can see how he would have trouble. I wonder if it has one of those like releases. I don't think it does. Looks good once you get it started, but man, that was a pain in the butt to get started that first time. I can see why he was sick of it. That one, yeah, that Husqvarna, we easy start. So it didn't have the, you know how it has that spring in there? I thought it would have that, it didn't. But it was like the first pull, like, well, we put gas in it for the very first time. It took two pulls. After I shut it down, it was just like, boom, it would just start right now. So that'll be really good for him. And that, that one didn't have quite as hard of a pull as this one. I don't know what horsepower the MS250 is, but the one that he bought is a 2.2 .2 horsepower Husqvarna. And hopefully that'll work good for him. Both of them work really good, but the power of the 360 over the 250 is considerable. That's a lot of wood to cut. I mean, I just cut, I don't know, four or five of them up here. And uh, <laughs> makes you realize how big that file is. That's a start anyway. It's about 11.30 up. Uh, they're having the uh, brats and burgers and whatever for sale for disabled veterans. So I'm gonna go up and get some of those for lunch. Yep, they're just standing in line.
wood for today. Taking a look at the trees here. This is one of the pear trees and it's got some good buds on it. This is the Mount Royal Plum. Doesn't look like it's doing much, but if I remember right, this thing breaks out in flowers first and then the leaves come out. This pear looks like it's doing real well also. I would think this year, I mean we planted them two years ago. Last year was a dry year, survive or die. So this year, the roots should really be in there and they should start to grow nice. This one here is a cherry tree. That one's really looking nice. This is the Zestar Apple. This one looks like it's doing okay. Chunky, don't eat that. This is also a Zestar and it looks pretty good. I'm a little concerned though because right above the the white protective thing there the bark is dark and it's cracked in a couple places and I'm worried it's going to end up like the tent apple trees where the bark just you know I don't know how to say it it just got all cracked and then the tree dies from there up. I don't know if it gets wind burned in the winter I'm not sure but oh, I'm just gonna watch them over the next month and see what happens. This one too, my honey crisp. I'm not sure if you can actually see it, but yeah, it just looks a little weird right about where that uh, tag is tied. Just above there for the next six, eight inches. It just doesn't look quite right to me. Here in the strawberry garden, there's just hundreds and hundreds of strawberries. But uh, last year, I, I cannot keep ahead of all of the grass that's in here. And, you know, you get to the point where you can't control everything. So what I'm going to do is start doing raised beds in here and then dig up the strawberries and put them in the raised bed. So then the grass that's, that whatever kind of grass this is, doesn't keep growing in there. It's just impossible. There's just not enough time to get everything done. So you have to do different techniques so you can, you know, manage everything and everything will be productive. All this rhubarb is coming back up, but it died off pretty early last year when it was dry. So we're actually going to dig this up and start planting it alongside the buildings because the stuff that's alongside of buildings, especially the stuff that's on like the east side or the north side, that which the stuff that doesn't get a whole lot of sun, a hot sun is doing really well and I mean all of these are coming up which surprised me I didn't think that they would for how early last year they died off but uh, we're definitely going to transplant these. Joni how am I supposed to get out of here if you're laying there? Beep beep! You can see this rhubarb here which is on the north side of the house quite a bit farther along. Now these are the red and this one over here is the green that I took from the hobby farmhouse and this is going really nice. What are you guys doing? You sick of being locked out here today? I locked him out because did I talk about it earlier? We had one chicken that's in the in the house now that is in the the medical cage because it got the crap totally beat out of it by them roosters. I'm sure it was the hens too. Once they draw blood it's brutal. Now it's got a head totally covered in blue coat and the saddest part about that is these are the new chicks and the smaller ones are I think they're golden comets which are a cross between a white leg horn and a Rhode Island red. The other ones were supposed to be, I can't remember what the name is, but anyway, uh, Tractor Supply got it wrong. Those chicks are definitely broilers. So for those, these two, and the one that's inside in the cage, I mean look how they walk, 
I mean, I've raised hundreds of broilers and butchered them, which is not what we wanted to do, but these two and the one inside are definitely going to the freezer. I mean, what are you going to do with them? They, they, they will hardly be able to walk. They look at they're double the size of the other ones, and they're the same age. This rooster right here, this bigger one, he is mean as... I mean, if I put my foot in there right now, he'll attack it. When Melissa goes in to get eggs, she has to have either a net or the shovel right there. Otherwise, he'll attack. And now the other one has been getting kind of mean, too. That one was calmer. So I have a feeling that this rooster right here, he might just end up in the sauce pot just like those other three on the same day. I don't know if Melissa will let me do it, but I... I told her if she, he attacks me, he's done right there, so I'm not, I, I don't have any time for that. It's that time of year when the sump pump is working. I forgot to come over here and show you the honeyberries. Trying to see if the deer have found these yet. We kept them covered so that the deer wouldn't eat them because they chew these down in the winter. And then also to protect them from the very harsh part of cold. But I'm hoping we get some berries on these this year. It's getting some flowers. I was thinking maybe that tractor tire was getting a little bit low. I've never had to put any air in any of these tires since we bought it. But it might be okay. It might just look like that because of how it's parked.
Good morning, everybody. Started out a little chilly when I was out, uh, uh, maybe 5.30, it was 41 degrees. And now I think it's already up into the mid-50s. I think it's going up to like 65 or 68 today. By next weekend, everything will probably need to be mowed. Some of it's already grown quite a bit, but a couple of warm days with all that water and it grows fast. I was in there talking to Melissa and we're going to make chicken wings and chicken legs on the gas grill today. And she said what I could, what she's really craving is jacked up shrimp. So I decided I'll run into the store and get the stuff that we need for that. I went into the workshop. I was gonna put, start putting together those chairs, even though I don't really feel like it. It's uh, it's so nice, you just wanna be outside. <laughs> and Melissa's bees will be here in less than two weeks, so I probably should get these medium supers put together. I'm not looking forward to this either, but I don't think it's gonna be that bad once we get the first couple of them put together. Us to over How long is this Ever since I started doing it, all these little bees, they're not honey bees, I don't know what they are, but they keep swarming around the, they like the bees whacking over here. Because these are all coated in beeswax. Mm -hmm. All 20 frames are put together, ready to go. Melissa has jacked up shrimp in the oven and chicken on the grill.
both hives are pretty much set up. Like I said earlier, her bees should be here within two weeks. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Totally missed out on the sap and syrup this year, but Melissa did make maple sugar by putting the sap into the dehydrator. If you guys haven't watched that video, I will put the link in the description. It was pretty interesting and a pretty neat process. I suppose next up we'll have to get the mower put onto the uh, tractor. Well, because within a week this place is going to need to be mowed. I will see you guys on the next video.